this company does the same thing that Uber does, that HelloFresh does, that Stitch Fix does, where they give you a code that you share with your friend. Your friend gets, you know, $10 off their first Uber ride and you get a $10 credit for sharing because Uber just wants to get their name out. So yeah. that's what Modare does. So whether you're a social marketer with them or you're a customer, you get your own code. So everyone's sharing their codes online anyway for everything, all the influencers, all the people. I mean, how many times do you go on Amazon and share a product you just bought with your brother or mm-hmm, sister mm-hmm. and, but they're not paying you for it. Yeah. So that's how Modare is structured. And what was really cool here is we have a, we're the only company that has a dual sided compensation plan. So you can rise to the top of the company completely on customers without recruiting a single soul. Welcome to the plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Join me for some honest, unscripted discussions with other CRNAs who are transforming their financial lives. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to another Provider Spotlight episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. Our guest today is in the middle of perhaps her busiest year ever from both a business and a personal standpoint. Ellen Lawletta is a CRNA by background who has realized early on the importance of having multiple income streams. She was born in the Ukraine and grew up in the USA watching her parents reinvent themselves and show the strongest work ethic. She's a mom of two little kids with one on the way. Uh, we, hopefully we don't get surprised during this taping uh, with, with an addition of the third one. But uh, anyway, she lives at home with her husband in New Jersey and, uh, and they're actually currently building their dream home using the earnings from their side businesses. So without further ado, welcome to the show today, Ellen. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to have you on and, and uh, excited to learn some more just in our little bit of a conversation ahead of time. I know that there's some things that we're going to talk about that are really going to uh, resonate with a lot of people here. So, um, well, let, let's kind of get back to some of your roots here. Uh, it sounds like your parents had a really tremendous influence on you mm-hmm. when you were growing up. So what did you really see from them growing up and what lessons have you utilized in your own life and career? Yeah. Uh, So my parents, we came here when I was four, almost five years old. And my parents had me later in life. I was a um, accident. I came well long after my brothers were teenagers. And so my parents were in their forties and like in the eighties, that was pretty unheard of. But um, so they had me late in life and then late in life, they also immigrated to the United States where, you know, they didn't have a lick of English to stand on. They didn't have any job lined up. They just kind of like came here with the dream, the American dream that was promised. Um, And a lot of their friends didn't really pursue much. You know, a lot of people come and they kind of like fiddle around with small jobs or they go on welfare or they just kind of, um, you know, live with family. And my parents are both so hardworking and so headstrong that they both went, got a completely new education and a completely new field and went and worked corporate America for like 25 years, learned the language and established a really, really solid lifestyle for us. And I've never seen a work ethic like that in anyone in my life. So I almost didn't have the option of not following in their footsteps. Like I would have been a complete disappointment. I would have zero excuse um, (laughs) because they did that, you know, with nothing, with no support. Um, I don't even know how they did it. Looking back on my childhood, I never knew there was a struggle if there was one. Um, They balanced everything perfectly. I was never alone, uh, but they really showed me what hard work means and that you really can persevere in any circumstance, especially if you're born in this nation, you know? Very cool. And so how many siblings do you have then? 
I have two brothers. They're older. Two they're, brothers. One is okay. 15 years older than me and one is 19 years older than me. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty tremendous. Did they come over with you? They came the, over the US? right before we did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, um, you know, obviously that, that had a big effect on you and, and how you pursued your, you know, nursing career and, and anesthesia career. How long have you been a CRNA and, and how was that process? Yeah, I graduated in 2014. Okay. So um, I always kind of knew I wanted to be in medicine. When I was little, I thought I wanted to be a pediatrician. And then when I went to college, I explored pre-med, but very quickly realized I liked nursing more. I think just from um, shadowing, doing some volunteer experiences in the hospital. And I was lucky enough to meet a CRNA who blew my world apart by showing me what she does and like how strong she is and what nurses are capable of. So after my first year of college, I switched to nursing and my path at that point immediately became CRNA. Very cool. Very cool. Well, uh, you know, I, I like to kind of go and, and walk through things. So can you walk me through the evolution of how you went from being a CRNA to starting to think about side businesses and, and settling on the ones that you did? Yeah, so I think I have a pretty common story, uh, especially for female CRNAs. Um, I was fine being a CRNA. I loved call. I'm a huge adrenaline junkie, so I love the trauma. I love the hearts. And then when I got pregnant with my first, um, my priorities kind of shifted. And I was never a little girl who dreamed about like being a mom or, you know, had these plans of when I would have kids. But then once I became pregnant, was expecting, I think the hormonal shifts really started to play on me. And I started to really wonder, you know, how am I going to be around if I'm always on call? And if I give up call or those late shifts or the, you know, shifts with the differentials, how am I going to maintain my income level mm -hmm. um, where we got comfortable? And so neither me or my husband like to live outside of our means. So I knew that either I would have to drop kind of like my level of living, or I would have to find a separate income source. And I'm not somebody who's going to go out and work a second job. So I knew it had to be something I could do from home. Um, at the time it was 2017 or 2016. And I was watching a lot of people go online and start this like selling thing. And none of it was for me until I had my kid. Mm -hmm. And then immediately I was like, all right, I get it now. Now I see why people are trying to make money from home, because if I can make the same amount, you know, wherever I am, rather than going and not being with my kid, like perfect. So that was my first step into um, an MLM when okay. my son was born. So that was January of 2017. I think I joined. Okay. And then a lot came after that. Yeah. So you started with network marketing, but you, yes. you didn't stay there. Um Talk about that transition and, you know, what the differences are with, with kind of what you were doing then and the way your businesses are structured now. Yeah. So I think network marketing was really important for me at that time in my life because it taught me a lot about myself. It taught me what hard work means, what persistence means, how to understand business taxes, the tax code, stuff like that. Um, I learned a lot, but what I realized was network marketing typically, although they have amazing products in a lot of these companies and the intentions are good, um, it's not structured to help people succeed financially. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of business fees monthly and a lot of purchasing your own products in order to stay commissionable or, you know, to stay active or to hit quotas and so what ends up happening, and this is why people refer to it as a pyramid scheme, even though it's not, those are illegal. Um, they're, yeah, but they're I very different, but yeah. Very different, <laughs> but I, yeah, because pyramid schemes involve the transfer of money for no product. So that exactly. completely eliminates network marketing. Mm -hmm. But I see why, because so you have all these people who come in chasing this dream that's like sold to them or this lifestyle that they see portrayed online that they have to invest in monthly to even be eligible to obtain. And then if you mm -hmm. can't sell the product or you can't recruit a team large enough, you are out more than you're getting back. And yeah. over time, people actually like go poor doing it. So that's where network marketing gets its bad rap, I think. Um, mm -hmm. What I noticed is I, 
I know myself, I am a high achiever. I can achieve almost anything I put my mind to because I don't quit. Not because I'm better than anyone. I just don't give mm-hmm. up. So like, eventually it just happens because the world is probably like, forget it. Leave this one <laughs> we're, we're tired of telling you no. We're done with her. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but what I noticed is I couldn't duplicate. Like nobody was seeing the success I was. And I don't like to sit at the top alone. And it was really frustrating to me. And I did all the trainings. I did all the, you know, ongoing education. I did everything I could have. And I was failing essentially at what I wanted to do. I had, I wanted to be a leader. I wasn't there to sell product. I wanted to lead. I wanted to help other people. And when I couldn't do that, I really had a really tough time because I took it upon myself as like it saying something about me, but really it's the structure. Those companies aren't set up for duplication because um, they are extremely leader dependent. There are no systems in place to help people succeed, especially on social media because of the spamming and the cold messaging and all the stuff that social media just shuts down now. They won't even show people what you're doing because they don't want it there. Um, And I also was pretty unhappy with the fact that if you wanted to sell product, you still could never succeed because they don't reward people who sell product. They reward people who recruit. And so Uh, these companies- So I'd be, do you, real quick, do you mind- mentioning yeah. the name of the company that you were with. Just, sure. Uh, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm out of my NDA. So, okay. Um, I was with Rodan and Fields, okay. which almost every CRNA on earth is. They Rome all was. know it. Yep. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and so they, if you, what, what ends up happening with these companies is they do not have any kind of customer acquisition or retention, and they're completely uh, riding on recruiting who recruiters who recruit more recruiters. And they do that by offering these recruiters a discount on their products. Mm-hmm. But what happens is if you don't have customers upholding your company, the entire company collapses on itself when mm-hmm. recruiters start to leave. Cause where's the volume coming from? Right. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to recruit people who don't want to recruit. Mm-hmm. So if they want to sell, there's no reason for them to enter the company. Cause you're not going to get rewarded. You're not eligible for the rewards, the gifts, you know, these luxury cars and stuff. And I didn't like that the luxury cars and the gifts and the trips were like this false image of success, because if you can't maintain your quota or your rank, you, that car's not free. You have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So you didn't have money to begin with. Now you're investing money monthly. Now you have to pay for a luxury vehicle Yeah, and it just ends up spiraling out of control. So I knew it wasn't me because no mm-hmm. one around me was succeeding. And so when I decided to leave, I just, I knew I had to do something like it because there's no tax benefit that beats a home-based business, Mm -hmm. but I knew it was never going to be another typical MLM. Okay. Because I couldn't do that again. And, and I mean, that's a perfect segue into what you actually decided to do. So, so tell us where you went with that. So I, I knew a good friend of mine who actually rose to the top of Rodan and Fields and she left. So she gave up a multi-million dollar business. along with several other um, people at the top of the company. And they all were going towards social retail. And I had never heard of it. I'm like, what is this? Is this another MLM? Because I'm not doing it. Um, And it's not. And so I joined a company called Modere. So Modere is different because seven years ago when they were restructured, um, Justin Prince, who's one of the top five network marketers of all time in the entire world, um, came in and restructured it because of the gig economy that we're in Mm -hmm. and structured it to reward customer acquisition. So this company does the same thing that Uber does, that HelloFresh does, that Stitch Fix does, where they give you a code that you share with your friend. Your friend gets, you know, $10 off their first Uber ride and you get a $10 credit for sharing because Uber just wants to get their name out. So that's what Modare does. So whether you're a social marketer with them or you're a customer, you get your own code. So everyone's sharing their codes online anyway for everything, all the influencers, all the people. I mean, how many times do you go on Amazon and share a product you just bought with your brother or Mm -hmm, sister mm -hmm. and, but they're not paying you for it. So that's how Modare is structured. And what was really cool here is we have a, we're the only company that has a dual sided compensation plan. So you can rise to the top of the company completely on customers without recruiting a single soul. So that was good to hear. That's yeah. That's a very important thing. Yeah. Because some people don't want to recruit, you know, and although it's easier here because most customers end up becoming social marketers um, to get paid twice a day, 
and not mm-hmm. just get a one-time credit, um, I don't work to recruit. Like I don't cold message. There's no spamming. Mm-hmm. We have specific systems in place. So we're not leader dependent. We're system dependent. Everybody enters the same way. You plug everybody in, they complete the same steps, they get rolling. And it's a company that's built like on 80% customer acquisition. So our customers then refer more customers. Mm -hmm. And so our customer pods are huge. And that's why the company in 2020 had the biggest year of its lifetime. And we're at like over 1.8 billion in revenue. Holy smokes. (laughs) Yeah. When like nobody here is struggling to succeed because you don't have to recruit. So when I entered this company and I saw the system work, I saw the compensation plan. I saw how important it was for people to get paid same day, twice a day, not wait a whole month to see rewards, Mm -hmm. um, to see nine different ways to be paid in a company and to replace my anesthesia income when I lost it because the world shut down in 2020. And then to duplicate that with other CRNAs who came, you know, it's one thing to replace a teacher's salary. It's another thing to replace a CRNA salary. Absolutely. And to be able to duplicate that over and over and over and over like we have, that's how I knew that like this was real. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, there's got to be some struggle here with, with separating yourself then from the network marketing scene in the sense of like, when people see your stuff online, how do they know that it's not like the network marketing stuff? That's got to be a hard thing. They don't really see so much of our stuff online because we don't spam. So that's mm-hmm. the first part. We don't spam social media. We function mm-hmm. a lot on attraction marketing, curiosity marketing, mm-hmm. um, and really a lot of influencers, like big influencers, the people from Bravo, from the housewives, mm-hmm. um, also use and sell our products. So that helps because none of them would be in MLMs. Um, But the biggest thing is we have a system in place, like I said, and we have a video that really breaks down the difference between social retail and MLMs. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody asks like, what are you doing now? I just send them that and they look at it and their mind is blown the same way that my mind was blown. And so that's why most people come in because they hate the top things that they have either tried themselves or know people who have done the spamming, the cold messaging, the investing monthly in business, the mm-hmm. quotas, we have no business fees and we get paid twice a day and you never have to recruit. Like that t- ticks off everything off the list that people hate in MLMs. Yeah, yeah. So if you want, you can send me the link to that and I can, uh, to that video and I can put that in yeah. the show notes for people to check out. Um, and that way they can kind of make their own determinations and, and whatnot. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, and I think it helps too, that most of these MLMs have a very specific product category. Like where Dan and Fields was only skincare. So yeah. if somebody doesn't want skincare, you've lost them. You know, mm-hmm. there's the hair one, there's, you know, the essential oils one. Modere is literally like the Amazon of clean living. We have over a hundred products in every category. So it really opens it up to people. If they don't want an expensive hero product, we have a million things that people are already using every day, dish soap, you know, household essentials, personal care, all kinds of stuff. So we're not asking them to spend money during a down economy on premium products they don't need. We're showing them how to change where they're spending it. So they're buying Mm -hmm. Tide at Target. And instead, wouldn't you rather buy something cheaper, more effective and non-toxic, especially with, you know, coronavirus going on and everything else that we're learning about cleanliness of the products we use. So I think that was another really, really big, important part. Wow. This interview continues to like go in directions I'm not expecting. So this is awesome. Um, So no, this (laughs) is a planner. It's not good. I know. Well, I mean, I am a planner, but Hey, I I love going with it too. So, um, you know, let's get into your second business now Mm -hmm. Um, because you didn't just stop with Modere. You decided to move into another area. So let's talk about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So Modere gave us the financial opportunity to build our house mostly in cash and also take that cash and then reinvest that into building a brick and mortar aesthetics business, which I never, ever, ever had any you know, interest in until 2020 when I lost my job in anesthesia because everything shut down for a few months. Mm -hmm. Um, And then after we went back, it was the double masking. It was, oh my God, healthcare is a disaster right now. Everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. And I really decided I wanted a different option where I was the boss, where I don't have to request vacation, where I can set my time, where I can make the same, if not more money in my own hours 
and not have to deal with, you know, the double masking COVID crap and healthcare and insurance mm -hmm. companies, um, but still use my clinical skills. Cause Modere is great because I work that in one hour a day. I do it from my couch, from my bed, from outside, wherever the heck I am, but it's not enough for me because I always, I mean, it's probably for my parents. I want to challenge all the time. I always want to learn new things. Mm -hmm. And I really want to use my clinical skills that I went to school for like 12 years for, you know? Um, so aesthetics started to look really good to me. And I had a lot of friends who trained with a CRNA, um, named Kelly Hermans and had incredible results and reviews launching their business and just being so highly trained. And then I couldn't ignore the aesthetics world. I mean, it's like a $20 billion world it's huge. that is just growing every single year. Um, so I knew the money was there. I knew that the interest was there. And so now I just had to get trained and her academy, it's called Beautify Academy. Um, she trains uh, advanced practice nurses. She trains CRNAs. She tra uh, trains PAs at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I was going to the right place. I trained and I just launched. I just, I went. Now, and is it necessary to have some kind of higher level of training in order to do that? And by that, I mean, you need to be at least in the healthcare field in order to, to go into this, or is it something it's state that, you dependent. Know... okay, there's definitely some States that allow really random people to inject like tattoo artists. Okay. Um, I think that it should be federally mandated that you should be mm -hmm. a medical professional because there's a lot of risk and a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah. Um, I would think states... so. I just, yeah. I, I just wasn't sure. Cause it, it's not something that's, that's, I, I've heard talked about much other than inside of the anesthesia circles with people going into the aesthetics business. But, but outside of that, I, I don't hear much about it. And so I didn't know what regulatory standards were. Yeah. Some States allow uh, nurses to inject mm -hmm. other States allow only advanced practice nurses to inject other mm -hmm. States only allow physicians to inject. There's nothing across the board and it's a complete different ball game when you try to own your own med spa. It depends on your state there as well. Um, gotcha. I will tell you, I know a lot of people who trained at like, you know, the empire beauty schools and like the kind of quick trainings mm -hmm. and almost all of them need to go and retrain with Kelly or someone of her caliber, yeah. because you just don't come out with enough competency to feel comfortable injecting an anatomical structure mm -hmm. that you can't see like veins. You can hit a vein because you see it. Yeah. A muscle theoretically should be in one spot. But if it's not and you miss and then you have a complication or if you inject filler into an artery by accident um, and you Ooh. can't identify the the complication or treat it, I mean, you're down like a really, really, really bad path mm -hmm. because what leg do you have to stand on, you know, yeah. in court? So a lot of people who train at other places end up going to retrain with her. I know that. Okay. Okay. So um, what is it that... Uh a med spa actually provides for people other than injections. There's got to be more to this than people just coming in for some Botox. I mean, it's a huge industry. You can literally do anything. Um, a lot of the top injectors in the U.S. who I've shadowed or trained with or followed have all told me that they've built their business on injections, on Botox and fillers. Okay. Um, once they reach a certain you know, financial level, they start to bring in other machines. So there's definitely things for like skin tightening, for uh, muscle for fat blasting for, um, radio frequency, but these things are really expensive. Mm -hmm. So they really encourage me to build on Botox fillers, threads, okay, stuff like that. And then once you have enough financial gain, then you could start bringing in other services that are going to be more expensive to you and your customers. Okay. Well, and I mean, having a brick and mortar business is certainly different than having an online so retail different. business. So what are some of the challenges that you faced and, and how have you been able to get over those hurdles? Um, I think having my online business first helped me significantly because I know how to grow online. And so I know how to grow a brick and mortar online, even though that's completely local. It's mm -hmm. so much harder to grow a brick and mortar though, because with social retail with Modere, we're in 28 countries. Yeah. I can grow from my couch into international markets. Um, with my brick and mortar, I have to target a specific area, a specific clientele who can afford and wants my services. So the social retail helped me with the social media tactics, but still, I mean, the fact that the investment is not small, the overhead is not small, the products are expensive, 
you have to know how to market yourself. You're still trading your time for money. Mm -hmm. If you don't go in, you're not making money. And you're kind of at the beck and call of your customers because some people work all day. They want to come on a weekend. Some people want to come at night. So it's still not social retail. It never Mm -hmm. will be for how much I can make in an hour a day doing that compared to brick and mortar. But together they build a financial um, kind of structure for our family Mm -hmm. that allows me to be present more and also fulfills me. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's totally different having to pay for things out of pocket up front, taking a chance. And it's not a lot, it's not a little bit of money. You know, people complain about having to invest into a network marketing company. That's maybe like 300 to start, try, you know, $20,000 to start an aesthetics business that you don't know will succeed. It's scary. Oh, absolutely. Scary. Absolutely. Well, and that's, and that's what I was going to ask you about are are some of those costs, but I mean, you know, there, there've got to be different ways to open this business up. You decided to go brick and mortar. Uh, some people, you know, will, will hold little parties at, at people's mm-hmm. houses and, and do it that way. Um, what was it that made you feel compelled to open a brick and mortar versus doing it the other way? So I did both Botox. You can do mobile. So um, in, in most States and I okay. did those parties and it definitely helped and events with other established businesses in your area that people already trust. So like some salons, um, brow bars, you know, makeup places, stuff where people already trust for their aesthetic needs Mm -hmm. spas you can partner with them and do some kind of you know event monthly to get customers and then also offer the people there some kind of incentive um and then obviously friends and family you do botox parties and then the word spreads but word spreads slower because it has to take effect they have to be happy by the time they tell somebody you know you have to be okay in the long run you can't do filler at home and at parties it's just not medically safe So if you don't do filler though, you're missing out on a huge, um, ROI. Okay. So for me, it was worth going both immediately right off the bat, but that's my personality. I don't hold back. I'm not going to just like have to do something. So I always encourage people once you're trained, just start, don't overthink it. There's a million reasons why you shouldn't, Mm -hmm. but if you don't, you're definitely not going to get ahead. So uh, for me, it was just important to start. I started both simultaneously. And once my customers with the Botox were happy and trusted me, my filler picked up a lot. My microneedling picked up a lot. um, Mm -hmm. And then I just went from there. Okay. So um, do you still work full-time as a CRNA now? Or are you part-time? I was part-time before I left for maternity leave. And I will not be going back until 2022. Okay. And so it's May now. So at least until January. And then when I gotcha. go back, definitely won't be full time because I'm not going to be able to do yeah. everything. Um, so, my goal is to oh. work like one or two days a week. Okay. Max. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. And so um, how, how much of your income would you say has been replaced by these businesses? Then? It's been surpassed. Okay. Like Amazing. Fully surpassed. I mean, I make more a month doing social retail then I could even make working five days a week, 1099 anesthesia in the state of New Jersey at the highest Holy rate. smokes. And then we started med spa. So that'll yeah. help too. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, obviously, you know, you, you've got your baby on the way you're building a new home. Um, mm-hmm. you know, how, how has, you know, just, growing into motherhood and growing into being a a parent and a partner to your husband, how has all of that played into your business decisions? Um, How how do you look at these different things and how to use your time and and shape things? I think it's made me take risks more because with no risk, there's no reward. And I want a better life for my kids than I even had. And I had a really good life growing up. Um, I want them to have more, more opportunity. I never want them to struggle. I want them to know the value of hard work. I want them to understand the difference between working for somebody and working for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, And it gives my husband and I, I mean, the number one stressor in a marriage typically is financial. Mm -hmm. So if I could eliminate that stress and have a marriage that is more fulfilled because we're not fighting over bills or living paycheck to paycheck or, you know, 
not going on vacation, not being able to go out together and spend time together. I think all of those things play together into a full life. And mm-hmm. when you start to lose that, um, a lot of people lose their marriages or families fall apart. And I don't want that. So anything I can do to uh, further my family's financial status to eliminate the financial stress, it's not mm-hmm. because of greed or because I want nice things. Like I drive a Kia, you know, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. always, I can, I will never drive something crazy expensive because I don't see the value in it. Um, but, and we're building a home, not because we are extravagant, but because we just can't find something in our area that fulfills our needs. And Mm -hmm. in the future, we want to invest in real estate, but like, I never want to be at a point where in order for me to invest, I have to dip into our daily money yeah, or our savings or take away from my retirement or my kid's college fund. Mm -hmm. So all that this side business stuff does is give me true financial freedom. Because a lot of MLMs talk about financial freedom, but they talk about it in the sense of, oh, you'll have this nice luxury vehicle or this trip. But true financial freedom is where you can get paid extra, invest more, go on more vacations, do whatever you need with the money. You decide because it's all cash. We get paid Mm -hmm. all cash. There's no like trip or car or whatever. Yeah. Um, And it allows people to select what they do with their money, Mm -hmm. whether they need to pay bills, pay down debt, save, you know, whatever they need to do. That's true financial freedom because then you have your regular job to just live off of. Yeah. And it frees you. It really frees you. It gives you options and options in life are priceless. I I agree. I mean, it's, it's the flexibility that you're looking Mm -hmm. for. Um, you know, it's, it's the flexibility to be able to say, Hey, I only want to work one to two days a a, a week and, you know, or, or having that business that, that, you know, in in certain instances it can kind of run itself, or at least you have the flexibility of, you know, Hey, I don't have to do it during the day. I can, you know, if I've got a, an hour or two at night, I can work on it and, yeah. And that works out well. Or if my, you know, if your tire, it, it, something happens to your tire, mm-hmm. your car needs service, or, you know, your air conditioner blows at your house, that not affecting your family's financial wealth or yeah. your finance or your family's like, you know, being able to eat or not making you have to go to work an extra shift to cover that and then miss time with your kids. Yeah. That financial freedom buys you options and options. I mean, I tell people every day of my life, if you can decide whether you want to work or quit or go get another job, or if they fire you tomorrow, you won't even feel it. Mm-hmm. That is where you want to be in life. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you know, the, having that power, having that, that, you know, flexibility, that freedom to be able to make that decision. Um, you know, a lot of people call it F you money, <laughs> it you know, and it, it, really it kind is. of is, I mean, it, you know, that's, and, and that's kind of the name of the game. Um, yeah. you know, and, and, I, I do think, you know, part of the reason I started this podcast is because so many CRNAs get trapped into having to go to work five, six days a week, you know, 50, mm-hmm. 60 hours a week because they've got to, you know, make the money to support the lifestyle that they've built instead of, mm-hmm. you know, really having that lifestyle design um, where, you know, your money's working for you or mm-hmm. you have the flexibility to do whatever it is that you want to do within your life. And mm-hmm. I think that's hard because yeah. everyone thinks we're high earners and we are high earners, but we're not that high earner and enough that you can do whatever you want. And if you yep. stop going to work, you're an on earner. So mm-hmm. a lot of CRNAs have to maintain that crazy call schedule, that crazy job schedule, you know, the crazy hours, a lot of people's spouses don't work because you know, they either don't want to, or because they can't because childcare is expensive. So then Mm -hmm. the other person as a CRNA has to work extra. And like most people who I talked to who did that were like, don't do what I did. You lose your marriage over it. You don't see your kids grow up over it. And then you can't take the money with you. Yeah. And one of the best um, quotes I ever heard was a Denzel Washington speech where he said that you can't have a U-Haul following your hearse. I like that. And to me that like blew my mind. I'm like, I want to live now. I don't want to save, 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 and work my butt off for 40 years to save, 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 and then retire and die. Yep. Like, what is the point of that? Yeah. You know, and you only get one go around. That's the truth. That's very true. Well, this has just been really fantastic. I have enjoyed every bit of this, all the twists and turns along the way. <laughs> it's been so much fun. And, and I just, I, I love the chance to sit down with people and hear their stories outside of their social media profiles and outside of, of all of, 
you know, the, the screens, I mean, I say that looking at a screen, but you yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. the personal connections and, and hearing the real stories behind things that are just so powerful to me. Um, I, I gosh, you've added so much today. I I've really oh, enjoyed thank you. this. So, um, well, Ellen, how can folks get a hold of you? Uh, they can find me. I'm all over social media, but I'm under my full name on Facebook, Ellen Lauletta. It's L-A-U-L-E-T-T-A. I'm the same on Instagram. Um, and me and Lacey and Crystal, three CRNA moms, we have a podcast called Scrub Caps and Sippy Cups. Um, and you can find us at Hey Smart Mamas on Instagram. You could find our podcast on any podcast player. And on Facebook, we are Scrub Caps and Sippy Cups. So you can find me anywhere if you want to. Yeah. And I didn't even get a chance to mention the podcast. We had so much other stuff to talk about, but, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's a really great podcast. I, I suggest anybody that's, you know, uh, uh, at least 50% of CRNAs are, are mothers. So, you know, are, are females and, and looking at motherhood. So it's, it's a very great uh, podcast to, you know, just learn about what those, those issues are and to kind of be able to come together and commiserate. So, um, yeah. you know, that, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, did you have anything else that you would love to add? Just, just, you feel the need to bring out here? I just think people need to not be afraid, mm -hmm. you know? They, they do so much research on people on their deathbed. And the number one thing people regret is not doing something. They never say, oh, I wish I didn't do this. Or I wish I didn't do that. They all say, I wish I lived more for myself. I wish I did more to make myself happy. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's the number one goal. If you can go to sleep every day and say you did that, that's, you know, you can't ask for anything more than that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being uh, Thanks for having here today me. and sharing some of this valuable time and knowledge with us. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed the twists and turns that we took during this conversation. I didn't realize the true differences between network marketing and online social retail. So that part was unexpected and really eye-opening for me. The most striking thing, though, was Ellen's grit and determination to be successful in whatever she puts her mind to doing. For her, that means creating a lifestyle that creates more flexibility for her ever-expanding family. I also appreciate her encouragement to just leave your fears behind. Those fears often do more damage to us by holding us back from the happiness that's just within our own grasp. Thank you all for joining me for this informative discussion. I'll see you next time on the Plan B CRNA podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page, where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.